Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name is Michael and I'm bitten by a radioactive book. On this fine Saturday I'm going to show you all the books I've bought in October for myself, so that's a book haul. First off, for my Audible credit of the month I bought Queen of the Tearling, um, which is a YA fantasy and this was quite a quite popular release a few weeks back or maybe two months back. Um, I was kind of on the fence if I wanted to read it, if not, but um, in the end I saw some positive reviews of the of the book and yeah, it's um, about a young princess that is raised in exile and she comes back to her um, kingdom and has to rule and ascend the throne and yeah, meets a lot of complications there of course. Next up I'm going to show you four review copies I've got. The first would be Sins of a Sovereignty um, by Plague Jack, which is obviously a pseudonym, but the author contacted me and normally when authors contact me it's a bit like this, there is no message. Um, I look at their page and then it's either um, a female author who writes more of paranormal romance or is an older male guy who writes like hard SF military and I'm not into both of this um, but this author Plackjack or Plackjack um, um, approached me in a very nice way and said hello and wanted to be friends on Goodreads and said yeah I have this book and if you're interested I can give you a free copy for review but um, if you're not that's totally fine and I like the stuff you're doing so um, just let's be friends here. And that was an approach that I really, really liked and it was not like 90% of the other authors that want to befriend me on Goodreads and I said ignore. Um, and I took him up on his offer after reading about the book because the book seems to be like the kind of darker, grim, dark, epic fantasy mix-up. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure because it's, it's a few weeks back what it's about but I got it and I think I think I'm going to tackle it in November, so I will let you know yeah, if this is an indie author you might want to put your eye on. If you watched my video yesterday, you already know that I'm reading Drakenfeld at the moment and that I got the second one in the series Retribution as an art copy as well from NetGalley. And yeah, it's about uh, Lucan Drakenfeld, who is an investigator for the Sun Chamber, an organization that rules over like eight kingdoms. And um, the world is kind of a Roman inspired fantasy setting. And at least the first one, and I think it's the same with the second one, is about a kind of murder mystery and it got really good reviews. I'm reading the first one at the moment as I said. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to tackle the second one. And again, if you've watched my Friday Reads video yesterday, you will know that I have an art copy of Willful Child, a space opera by Steven Erickson. It's a bit of a parody of, of Star Trek and like, like the way it was depicted in the 60s with a bit of a sexist um, captain uh, who's um, yeah kind of a parody of, of, of Captain Kirk I think um, and yeah it's I already started it it's uh, really humorous and I'm looking forward to yeah to finish it and I was also lucky enough to get an art copy for Tarkin the um, book about Tarkin um, from Star Wars and yeah I think it is the story of how he came to be where he was when we get to know him in A New Hope and I'm really looking forward to read it. And next up we've got like 11 books that I've bought for myself this month. The first of this would be Riding the Serpent's Back by Keith Brook. It is a fantasy and I don't know too much about it. It was a book, if I recall correctly, that was featured on Twitter by a publisher that said something like, oh, it's like 89 cents at the moment. 
and I went to the uh, to the Amazon page and looked it up and it sounded interesting. I'm just going to read you the last sentence because this was the one that that sold me a bit of the of the blurb and it says um, where is it there. The novel's cast of shape changers, earth charmers, healers, and illusionists must battle to save civilization from the evil rule of Lachlan Pass and his followers. And yeah, the, this combination, shape changers, earth charmers, it sounded very, very magical, very traditional. Um, so yeah, it had my interest and I'm going to read it. Next up I've got a steampunk novel and as you know I'm a huge steampunk fan and most of the steampunk novels I read are set in London but there's like a set, uh, a second very popular setting, that's quite a difficult sentence, um, a second really popular setting and that is The Weird West and uh, The Lost Kingdom by Matthew J. Kirby is set in this weird west and it follows like a family that I think travels on a sky ship and yeah they are looking for the lost Welsh king Madoc I think. I think that might be the same Welsh king that the Raven Boys and Maggie Steve Farders um, Raven Boys cycle are looking for but I'm but I'm not sure. Um, and uh, and they're also fighting against the French. So yeah, it might be might more of a northwest Canadian setting. I'm I'm not quite sure, but it sounded interesting enough. It's right up my steampunk alley. And yeah, uh, never let a month pass without buying a steampunk novel. The next one I've got is Unholy War by David Hare. It's the third book in his Moontide Quartet, so there will be another one. Um, I've read the first one so far, Mage's Blood, and I really enjoyed it. It was a four-star read for me. It has um, basically the idea that there is a continent that is more of a western medieval culture and you have one continent that is more in the tradition of uh, uh, 1001 knights so um, these continents are connected through a bridge the moon bridge but normally the tides in the um, in this world are so high that the moon bridge is flooded for most of the time and only every I think 11 years and then for one or two years the, you can yeah, travel on the moon bridge. So these two countries have a very interesting relationship because the Western society tried to conquer parts of this more Arabic sounding um, culture and um, yeah but they always have to wait until they can go and conquer further and of course the um, second nation wants to fight back but when I say second nation that's not really correct because on both countries there are different nations that also fight each other and yeah the first book was really really interesting um, I already got the second book and yeah, the third book just came out I think in, in the UK and in the US the second one, Scarlet Tide, just came out this month. So, so the US might be a year behind um, the UK with the release of these books. But if you're a, a reader in the US at least I think you can go out and buy Mage's Blood and Scarlet Tides if you're interested in that. The next one I got is The Relic Guild by Edward Cox. Um, if you look closer on the cover, you will see that there is some kind of maze. And this maze has um, yeah, something to do with the story. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I just know that the city the story takes place is set at the edge of this kind of maze and the maze has something to do with the magic in the world but I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, it sounded really really interesting, it sounded like a unique idea. I've read mixed reviews so far about it but it was just like 
two euro ninety nine. So I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, give it a try. Oh, and next up we've got the silly book of the month I bought. Um, it's Dragon Princess by S. Andrew Swan. Look at the silly cover and I expect like a Terry Pratchett kind of, of parody because uh, what I've read is there is like a thief character, there's an old mage, there's a princess and a dragon and somehow in some kind of accident they all swap bodies. So in the end the princess ends up to be inside the dragon and the thief ends up to be inside of the princess and that seems just like a romp parody all over the place book and yeah I'm really looking forward that seems to be my kind of humor. Then certainly one of the most prominent books I've bought this month is Half a King by Joe Abercrombie. A bit the same as with Queen of Tearling. I caved in the end. I was quite sure for a while that I would get it because I'm not that much into YA and although I'm a really big fan of Joe Abercrombie I didn't know if I'm really interested in him in him writing YA but especially um, as Lindsay um, from Lindsay Ray yeah was raving about this book so yeah, enthusiastically I was like, ah, oh, what the heck, it's Abercrombie, it can't be that bad. And um, in this book we're following, I think, Prince Yavi, and Yavi is kind of disabled, like, like a bit, and uh, but he should rule or something. You see, I'm, I'm very well prepared this book haul. I'm always like, yeah, this book is about something and uh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, and it's the same uh, here, but if you, I think if you're interested a bit more in um, fantasy, you already know about this book, so I might not have to talk about it a lot. And if you've seen this week's review, um, I reviewed Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Back. It was a very cool action adventure, a space opera with a lot, uh, or a lot, yeah, not a lot, but with uh, a bit of romance in it. And um, I really enjoyed it. It was a four star read for me. And therefore, I've got Ola's Night, which is the second book of the series. And I've got Heaven's Queen, which is the third book of the series, and it's a trilogy, so yeah, it's all uh, available at the moment, and I'm going to finish the trilogy. Next up, we've got Sworn in Steel, which is the second book in Douglas Yudik's Tales of the Kin. Um, the first one would be Among Thieves, and it's a sword and sorcery, uh, style tale, yeah, about thieves, and um, I haven't read the first one, so again, I'm not no, uh, I don't know so much about it, but it got very very good reviews, and the second one was also only up for two ninety nine, so I thought, yeah, for that price, I take the second one without ever having read the th uh, first one. I owned the first one, and it yeah sounded like a great. Um, sword and sorcery and yeah, I wanted to have it. And last but not least we have a series or the final volume of a series that I talked about a bit on this channel on one or two occasions. It's the Shadow of the Apt series by Adrian Tchaikovsky and I bought the final volume Seal of the Worm. If you want to um, hear a bit about uh, or more about the series and the world. Um, I feature it in my epic fantasy guide so I will talk about it there um, yeah, in more detail just here in this book haul. I've bought the final one and yeah I can now finish the series. So these were a lot of books I've got. Um, have you read any of them? Have you heard of any of them? Are you interested in any of them? Please tell me below in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of me, hit subscribe. If you want to know what's coming up on my channel, look inside the description box. There's a little segment there called On the Horizon. I wish you a good day and hope you get bitten by a really good book too. Bye!